We've now finished looking at the programming section of this course. We're now moving on to look at data as a general theme. And we're looking at the binary numbering system in this video. So essentially in this actual video, we're looking at representing numbers and the next few videos we'll look at other types of data. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to cover. It's a bit like the algorithm video, but it's going to go on and on. <laughs> so if you're advising this, you might want to skip bits you're comfortable with. You might be really comfortable with the conversions, so you might want to skip that in the video. But bits of this are really important to just revise anyway, so like the signed integers, uh, y hex decimal is used, and maybe bits of overflow too. So let's begin by looking at what we mean by binary. So we've mentioned before that everything processed, used, stored in a computer is represented by binary digits at the lowest level. So um, binary is a base two numbering system and that means it has two digits, so zero and one. Uh, the concept of a base, um, if you can fit it into your answer it'd be really good but really that just means we have two digits and as we say that's zero and one and these are bits, so zero is a bit, one is a bit. And because binary doesn't only represent numbers, although this video is essentially about that. It's better to think of 0 and 1 as symbols with uh, 1 representing true and 0 representing false because um, they're not, they use more as symbols representing something else um, rather than actual numbers. And so we, we've said before that true and false are Boolean values and this essentially means that logic operations can be used to manipulate these values and in computers we have circuits called logic gates, something you don't necessarily need to know about, which implement these operations. And 0 and 1 are essentially representing it being on or off, so the two states, two different uh, voltage levels. Um, we, this contrasts to the system we use, humans, in our, you know, the Western world at least. I'm actually using a base 10 numbering system. I'm actually using digits 0 through to 9. So that's 10 digits in total, but we're counting from 0, so 10 is not included. 10 is just 1 and 0. Um, and this is also called decimal, and mainly people call, decim call it decimal. Deanery is occasionally used, but I've never really heard anyone say deanery in a normal context other than computer science, but that's what we've got to call it because the exam board are telling us to. So it also says in the specification about knowing that that is data and instructions for representatives. So quickly we'll just talk about what instructions are, although it's not a main part of your course. Uh, we'll look at things like assembly languages and translators in a future video, but as we say, uh, when you execute a computer program, a translator converts the instructions written in the code into machine code, and machine code is just zeros and ones, it's patterns of bits, so long streams, as we call it, of zeros and ones. And so this means that instructions are also represented in binary. They, um, the instructions, we've looked at this bit before, the operator is kind of the actual instruction bit and the operands are the data bit of the general instruction and it will look a bit like this. So this instruction add 10 to 5 might look like this in binary. So that's just quickly covering that to make sure we don't get caught out. Uh, if we move on to look at conversion from deanery to binary. Okay, I just paused the recording there to take the ambitious step of using my graphics tablet for this bit. I'll do my best to make it as real as possible. So the first one we're going to look at is converting 7 in deanery to binary. And we're going to express it as a nibble. So a nibble is 4 bits. We'll look at this, I mean, not in more detail, but we'll cover it properly in two videos' time. Um, but if we just begin by just talking about how this is done, how place value works in deanery. So I'm gonna use a table method for these examples. I think it is the best one to explain it. And if you think about what we learn in primary school, uh, where we have, I think it's called place value or something. And so we have a units column, we have a tens column, we have a hundreds column, then we have a thousands column. And so a number like uh, 3,212, this is saying we've got two lots of one, we've got one ten, we've got two hundreds, and three one thousand. So it works a bit like this, and it's essentially the same way in binary two. So the first thing I do is draw a table. Because we know we have four bits, we're told it's going to be four bits, we draw four columns, and we have two rows. And because it's base two, the columns are going to multiply, or, sorry, increase times two each time. Um, so the first column in any base is always one, then we have two, four, and eight. So we double each time. And essentially what this is doing, this is two to the power zero, two to the power one, two to the power two, two to the power three, and this is the same. This is ten this a thousand will be ten to the power three. Um so that's how it works. Uh if we actually start trying to convert seven 
in deanery to binary, what we do is the first step we take is to say, how many times does eight go into seven? So we start with the leftmost column. How many times does eight go into seven? It doesn't go into seven, so we have to write a zero here. How many times does four go into seven? Four goes in once, so we write a one, but the remainder when four goes into seven is three. So we're using three now. How many times does two go into three? It goes in once, remainder one. How many times does one go into one? It goes in once. So that's our binary representation of seven. Zero, one, one, one. And when we're asked to express it as a nibble, um, basically in binary, any leading zeros, like in deanery, any leading zeros don't affect the number. But if we're asked to express it as a nibble, we have to write the leading zero in. Uh, so we'll leave it like that. Uh, the second question is slightly harder. We're going to look at how you represent 212 in binary form. Um, I'm going to draw the table uh, myself in this step just to show you how I would approach it in the exam because I'm not going to draw a table for you. So um, first thing we want to say is this, this, I think it's called a subscript, just denotes the base of a number. So you might see that notation. So this is saying it's in base 10, so deanery, and we want to write it in base 2 form. So the first thing you're going to do is draw your table, as I say. Um, so I'm going to start with 1 as always, then 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And then the next one would be 256. But immediately we can see that 256 wouldn't go into 212. So there's no point writing it. We're not asked to express it as a uh, nine bit number. So we can just ignore that last column and all of your columns after that, obviously. So if we draw the little table, I'll do my best to do a straight. Okay, that was better than I thought. So we're going to repeat the same process and go, how many times does 128 go into 212? Well, it does go in, so it goes in once. Remainder, what the remainder will be? Well, it will be 212 minus 128, which is, uh, it's going to be 84. Yes, yeah, 84. So this is what we're using now. How many times is 64 going to 84? Well, it goes in once. Slightly easier remainder to work out. We've got a remainder of 20 now. Uh, 32 doesn't go into 20, so we write a 0. 16 does go into 20, remainder 4. 8 doesn't go into 4, so we write a 0. 4 does go into 4, and so we have a remainder of 0, and so this will be 0 as well. So that is 212 in binary form, one, in binary form, 11010100. One, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero. So that will be our final answer. Okay, now we look at conversion from binary back to deanery. Slightly easier, I think. Um, and we're also going to use a table here. So what you, what I do is actually just change to red because it'll be slightly easier to read. Um, you do a method like this. I've copied this out of the textbook because the graphic is a lot nicer than I could do it if I tried to copy it and make it a lot worse. Really what you're doing, you're multiplying the value of a bit, so it's either going to be 0 or 1, by the position's quantity. So that's the number in the column. Then you total it. So let's do this example with 0, 0, 1, 1. So first thing you do, you write in your binary number. And you obviously do as many columns as you want. Uh, no, you do as many columns as your number is. That's me trying to talk while thinking. So I'm going to do my column headings now. So it's going to be 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And this will be the largest you'll get in the exam. It says the upper limit is 255. And the next column is going to be 256. So this will be the max you'll get. And this is a byte, by the way, so that's 8 bits. So what you do to convert it back to a deanery integer, you basically multiply, multiply them together. So 0 times 128 is 0, same with this. But 1 times 32 is 32. Uh, 16 times 1 is 16. It's quite easy in binary. And 2 times 1 is 2. So what you do, just total this. And um, this equals, when you add them up, is uh, 13 plus, uh, 32 plus 16 is 48, plus 2 is 50. So this number is 50 in base 10. Uh, you might have also used, so this table method is what I did. Um, was the first method I really understood. There's also an algorithm to do this you might have learned in class. I'm not going to do examples of it because it's difficult to kind of explain why, but it's really using the same idea. Um, 
so if you want to use this algorithm you might want to pause the video and read it I won't really talk you through it and this is just an example of how it works so you might have used a different method I'm trying to cater for everyone here okay so we're going to look at binary arithmetic now I just want to clarify something because I realized I was maybe a bit unclear uh, this is one whole number this we often write a gap in between two lots of four bits so two nibbles uh, for a reason we'll look at later uh, to do with hexadecimal but I think I said something like we're going to convert 0011 really I meant the whole number it's difficult to uh, write and talk simultaneously I've discovered uh, so we're going to look at binary addition first then subtraction then multiplication so addition is essentially the same as when we do it in deanery with decimal numbers uh, so we may have to carry numbers so let's look at a very very quick example so 58 plus 24 we can do because uh, it will give us a carry so 8 plus 4 is 12 and we carry a 1 and we do 5 plus 1 is 6 plus 2 is 8 so our answer is 82 so that's how we do it we have to carry a number and in, in binary this is effectively the same uh, except we have these following rules so often textbooks and websites will display just four rules I like to think of there being uh, a fifth rule I'm going to make it look really bad but what happens here you write a 1 down and then you carry a 1 2 so this is essentially representing a carry and this is representing a carry 2 uh, really this isn't written because this collapses into 0 carry 1 and then 0 plus 1 is 1 with a 1 carried which is why we get this uh, but I like to think of that as an unwritten rule so let's do a few examples three examples um, first of all let's look at 4 plus 7, except we want to do it in binary, so this is going to equal uh, 11, so that's what we're looking for, if we get it wrong, uh, we need to compare it to that, so what we're going to write is 4 in binary, so 4 in binary is just 1, 0, 0, and 7 in binary, as we looked at, is 1, 1, 1, uh, we wrote it as a nibble though, so let's be consistent, and write a leading 0, 2, um, so we're going to add this together, so 0 plus 1 is 1, so same in this column, 2, but 1 plus 1 so we see here we write down is zero and we only carry a one and then one plus zero plus zero is one so this is our answer and um, just to check this is correct we can say this represents eight so this is eight plus two plus one and that equals eleven so good news so we can now look at our second example which is uh, let's switch to green okay so 196 plus 13 this should equal uh, 209 so that's what we're aiming for, we're going to do it in binary of course. I just worked out what 196 is to save us going through it again. So it's 1100100. One, zero, 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 one, zero, zero. Obviously you just work it out in the normal way we just looked at. And 13 is going to be 1101, uh, one, I believe. So I'm trying to line it up. And then we add. So 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 1 is 0. Carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry a 1, and then 1 plus 0 is 1, and then the rest of it works out fine. And uh, to check this, this would be uh, 128 plus 64 plus uh, 16 plus 1, and 17, yes, I think that works out as 209, so that's okay. Third example is 13 plus 6, I know it looks easier, but actually we're going to encounter bit of an error I pick these examples liberally there's not always a correlation between size of a number and how difficult it is it might work out really nicely you get no carries so 13 point 13 plus 6 should equal 19 uh, but we'll get something different because 13 in binary which we looked at is 1101 1, and 6 is going to be 110 and we add them together and 1 plus 0 is 1 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry a 1, and 1 plus 1 is 0, carry a 1. And so if we're only storing these as nibbles uh, with 4 bits, we're going to run out of space because we have a 1 here as well. But if we're only storing it as a nibble, then we've run out of space. And this is called sometimes called an overflow. Um, I like to think of it as an overflow, but some people don't give it that definition. But really, you're carrying into a column you don't have existing. Uh, the, the way memory is organized in a computer is, is in very set bits. You can't just overflow into the next memory location. You have to remain within your constrained bits. And so this would cause an issue. And we'll look at a very pronounced issue in terms of two's complement 
later. Right, so we're now looking at subtraction in binary. Uh, it's very much like deanery. Again, we often have to borrow a 10 in deanery uh, when we, in fact, let's do an example. So let's do 92 minus 15. Right, so 2 minus 5 we can't do because it's going to be a negative. So we have to borrow from the next column. We write 8 and we put a 1 here. So essentially we're borrowing a 10 from the next column. It's 2 becomes 12. And so 12 minus 5 is going to be 7. And 8 minus 1 is 7. So the answer is 77. Um, and this is the same in binary except because it's in base 2 instead of base 10 we have to borrow a 2 from the next column instead. And so again, let's do three examples. Um, first one, let's do 10 minus 7. So this should uh, equal 3. It's quite a lot easier in deanery. But in binary, uh, so 10 in binary is going to be uh, 1, 0, 1, 0. And then 7, as we looked at, is just three ones in a row. And so to subtract this, 0 minus 1. So we encounter a problem already. Because like this example, we're going to get a negative. So we have to borrow from the next column. So let's cross out the 1 here and write a 0. And then we borrow a 2 across. So it's often, some people will write this as two ones, like above each other, instead of a 2. I tend to write 2 because I find my handwriting gets a bit messy sometimes. And it, for columns, it's better to try and keep them intact. And it's sometimes difficult, especially when you have lots of borrowing. So I often write a 2 instead of singling the two ones individually. And this is generally accepted too because really you're just working out. It's part of your working. So 2 minus 1 is 1. 0 minus 1, so we encounter the same issue. And we can't borrow from the next column along because we've got a 0 here. So we have to borrow from the column two ones along. We write a 0 here, we write a 2 here, but we're trying to borrow from this. So we've got a cancel it, cancel it into a 1, and we write a 2 here. Sorry if it's really small. Uh, so 2 minus 1 is 1. And then 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 minus 0 is 0. So our answer is 2 plus 1 equals 3, fortunately. So another easiest example, I would say that subtraction is probably the hardest of the three arithmetic we're looking at. So the other one to look at is uh, multiplication in seconds. So this answer is 7. Uh, 7 seems to be occurring everywhere. Uh, so 21 minus 14, 21 in binary is going to be 1, 0. In fact, let's write this slightly further down to stop that issue occurring. So uh, it's 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Subtract, uh, subtract 14. So 14 is 1, 1, 1, 0. So 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 minus 1, okay, we've got to borrow from here, write a 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 0 minus 1, same issue as before, we've got to go two columns along, so this cancels to 0, write a 2 here, this cancels to 1, write a 2 here, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 here. So it's very, very similar to this, actually. I didn't realize how similar it was. But this also equals 7. So like I say, 7 is coming from everywhere. So uh, third example, we're going to look at a sort of slightly larger numbers. I've written these numbers down to save me having to try to uh, work out again. So uh, 158 is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And 37 is... Uh, this, I'm trying to do it in columns, right that's probably the best I can do, so I should say this should equal, what should it equal, uh, 100, yeah, 121, so we're looking for that number, so 0 minus 1, we have to borrow from this column, write a 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 0 minus 0 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 minus 1, I have to borrow from here, write a 2 here, then write a 2 here, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, 0 minus 0, because this is gone now, uh, is 0. So this is our answer. And this is essentially 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 1 which I'm going to trust equals 121. We're now looking at 
binary multiplication, the final one we need to look at. Um, subtraction is probably the hardest. For me personally, it's what I found hardest. So keep persevering, look at other videos on YouTube if you're confused and try some stuff out yourself. Uh, but multiplication is relatively easy because really you're just doing repeated binary addition because you're only multiplying by one or zero. You either get a copy or you get all zeros. So really just for one times table. So it's quite nice and easy. Let's do a harder a deanery example so I say hard it's not that difficult uh, 216 let's do times 13 so what we do you do 3 times 6 is 18 we have a 1 left over so 3 times 1 is 3 plus for 1 is 4 3 times 2 is 6 and we add a 0 here this is the key bit we add a 0 because we're moving along to look at the tens column now so we're doing 1 times 6 is 6 1 times 1 is 1 1 times 2 is 2 and if we can add this up it's going to be 8 plus 10 with a 1 left over. 6 plus 1 is 7, plus for 1 is 8 and 2. So it equals 2,808. But this is the key bit, the 0. So uh, let's look at two examples because, like I said, it's not as difficult. So 9 times 5 should equal 45. And 9 in binary is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And we need to multiply this by 5, which is 1, 0, 1. So, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1. So you can see what I mean when we say we get a copy. Uh, and then we're going to get, we're going to write a 0 in because we're moving on to look at the 2's column. And so we're just going to get zeros here, aren't we? Because it's multiplying by 0. I'm just going to write for me, you don't have to. Um, and now we're adding two zeros automatically because we're moving on to the 4's column. So we're going 1 times 1 is 1 two zeros and one. So again, it's just a copy, but it's shifted across. So we now have to add this up using binary addition. It's slightly harder with three rows, but still not too bad. In fact, this is a very easy example because we have no issues with uh, carrying. So this is our answer, that equals 45. Okay, the next example we're gonna do is 10 uh, multiplied by six. So 10 in binary is one, zero one zero and six is one zero ah no it's not it's one 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 zero my mistake okay so one one zero so zero times zero is zero in fact all zero inevitably we add a zero because we're moving along one times zero is zero one times one is one zero one two zeros now um, so we go uh, one times zero is zero one times one is one zero one and now we have to add it up like normal zero zero one 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 okay so those examples turn out to be pretty easy but we're not going to get massively difficult this should equal 60 and I believe it does so um, yeah, you just have to be a little bit careful, but it's not as hard as subtraction, I don't think. Okay, we're now looking at something slightly different, and that's the concept of signed binary. So, so far we've only looked at representing whole positive integers, but to represent negative numbers we have to use something different. We have to use something called a signed number representation. So just to clarify, uh, unsigned numbers are just assumed to be positive. Um, if we have just a 4, we assume that to be a positive 4, but whereas a signed number has the positive sign or the negative sign, so minus 4 is negative 4. So there's a few well-known sign number representations, uh, but you need to know about just two of them, so sign and magnitude and two's complement. First one is sign and magnitude, and this is, I mean, uses the convention we have in deanery. So we write a number alongside the sign, so minus 5. This is our sign, the minus, and 5 is for magnitude, it's for size of the number. I'm a bit furthest to the left, so in your table, uh, the one for column furthest to the left, often called the most significant bit for reasons we're not really going to go into now, uh, is used to represent the sign. So if we have a 0 in the far left bit, that represents a positive number. If we have a 1 in the far left bit, that represents a negative number. So to store minus 27 in sign of magnitude, we need to set the sign bit to 1. So in this example where we have a byte used to represent uh, this negative number, the far left bit, which is usually 128, is the sign bit. So we set the sign bit to 1, and then we fill in the rest of the table using what we've just looked at, um, just normally, 
because we're just representative magnitude so it's just positive 27 in this bit but we know it's all negative because of this, the positive sign bit so sign of magnitude is quite logical but I mean it's logical because it's very similar to how we do it in deanery but the actual processing required to accommodate it means it's never really used for reasons we won't really go into um, but one issue you get is that you have two values for zero as hopefully you can see uh, zero isn't positive or negative it's more like a placeholder uh, and you can see here we have a positive and negative zero which isn't ideal and so in a sign of magnitude byte so you have eight bits in total seven for the magnitude one for the sign bit the range is from minus 20 minus 127 and positive 127 but you have two zeros so uh, we want to use something different and this is called two's complement and this is what's really used in computers it's the most commonly used sign number representation so again the most significant bit the, fur, the, the bit furthest on the left is also a sign bit with a one there representing a negative number and vice versa and so one way to represent a positive number as negative using two's complement is to invert every bit this is something called one's complement where you flip a zero to a one you flip a one to a zero and one's complement is actually another method that's used in some older computers but not as much anymore and then what you do after you flip every bit you add one using binary addition so there's another method to do this and this is to make the most significant bit column negative I'm going to use, the, use some algebra to find the magnitude that needs to be represented. Uh, this isn't my favourite method. Uh, this is an awful looking equation because it just doesn't make sense. But I'll show you. I'm going to show you all three methods in a second. And that means it's a third one. And the third way to do it is to copy the bits from the positive representation right to left until you copy a one. So once you copy a one, you then invert the rest of the bits. So I'm going to show you all three of these in a second. Right, so I'm going to show you all three methods for representing minus 44 in deanery using two's complement notation in binary. So this is what positive 44 looks like. I should say that the positive rep representation is the same as the positive representation in two's complement. So this is positive 44 in two's complement as well as just being 44 in unsigned. So the first method, uh, the reason I'm showing you all three methods is so you can choose which one you want to use. You might have been taught one in class. Uh, this is one that sticks in my mind. If I think two's complement, I think do one's complement and add one. That's just what I think. So what you have to do here, you do one's complement, as we say, which is essentially just flipping every bit. So zero becomes one. So it's one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. Hopefully you can see what I've done there. Just flipped it. Then we do two's complement by adding a one to it. So just binary addition. And this will be two's comp now. So 1 plus 1 is 0, carry a 1, I'll just write it here. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry a 1, then it works out quite nicely. So this is the two complement representation using the first method. Second method is to use a negative most significant bit. So we have to use a bit of algebra to do this. Uh, really what we're doing is we're trying to get minus 44. So... Okay, I'll show you the table first, actually. So we have to make 128 negative. Um, and so what we're doing is, you can tell this isn't my most favorite method, is essentially we're doing this. That's what the equation before was trying to say. So x is going to be minus 44 plus 128. And x is going to be our magnitude. So we want to represent, uh, what's that going to be? That's going to be 84. So we're trying to represent 84 in this bit. But we need to add a 1 here. In fact, let me do this in red because it won't come up very well. Uh, we need to add a 1 here because we're representing negative 44. And the magnitude is going to be 84. So uh, 64 goes into 84 once, remainder 20. 16 goes into 20. And like that. And fortunately for us, that's the same is above. I have to check that for a second. Yeah, it is the same as above. And the third method is to then copy and invert. This is probably the quickest method, actually. Um, and this is probably the method I would use in the exam, but it's not quite as memorable as um, method one, perhaps. So we're doing so plus 44, or just the normal 44, is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, just copying off the top right. And so negative 44 is going to be this copied, so we copy it until we get a 1, 
So we, we've now copied a one now. So now we've co we've copied one. We have to invert the rest. So like that. So as soon as you copy, as soon as you write down a one, the next number along you have to invert. So you have to copy at least one one before you start inverting. And you can see we have the same answer for all of it. So overall, uh, 44 in two's complement is going to be. Um, it's going to be one one zero one zero one zero zero. A couple more points to note about two's complement. Um, there's only one zero in misrepresentation, so this gets rid of a major issue we had in sign and magnitude. Um, but unfortunately, you get a imbalance in the range. So instead of negative one hundred twenty-seven to positive one hundred twenty-seven, because you're getting rid of one of the zeros, you have an imbalance on the negative side. So one byte, so eight bits, will have a range of minus 128 to positive 127. So you have one extra negative number you can represent. Um, and one thing we talk about is a concept of overflow. So adding two's complement values, so adding two two's complement values is the same as normal binary addition, except when you add two large values, you get an overflow. I don't think you need to. You'll be asked to add or subtract two's complement values, but it helps explain what an overflow is. So if we have 103 plus 115 in deanery, and this is the same in binary, I should do the little subscripts, but it will look a bit weird. Um, and the, effectively, the result we would get if we're constrained to using one byte is negative 38. And obviously, that's wrong. Um, so an issue, has, uh, an issue has happened here. And essentially, what's happened is that so it should be equal to 218. But because we're constrained to a byte, 8 bits, the carried value overflows into the sign bit. So you can see here with 1 plus 1, it's going to be 0 carrier 1. So we end up with a 1 in our sign bit. So 0 is here because they're both positive, and we get a 1, meaning it's a negative number. So that's not ideal. There are ways to handle this using certain circuits and certain processes, not on your specifications, so we won't worry about it. But this is what an overflow is. It's when a result has a different sign to what you would expect. So really, it's just because a calculation has given you a bigger result than can be handled in your space that you have allocated. Right, the final thing to cover in this increasingly long video is hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is another numbering system. We've looked at two others so far. This one has a base of 16, and so it has 16 digits. And it shares 0 to 9 with deanery, and then uses the letters A to F to represent 10 to 15. So that's the key difference. Usually the letters are written in capitals, but not always. So the reason why hexadecimal is used in computer science is that long strings of bits are difficult to understand. So lots of zeros and ones are difficult to understand. And so hexadecimal notation is used as a way to simplify this. And this is because we tend to write bit patterns uh, in terms of lengths of four. So you saw me do a gap in that number near the start of the video. Um, and hexadecimal notation is interesting because it represents a pattern of four bits with a single digit. So if we uh, skip along a bit and add the binary column to this table, you can see that binary represents numbers in four bits from zero up till 15, and hex does this in just one digit. So binary uses four, hex does it in one digit. So it shortens a long number like this into a slightly shortened number, but that's a lot easier to understand than this. So a misrelationship makes it very easy to convert from binary to hexadecimal. You just have to break it up into four bits each time, and it shortens the written representation. So we need to look at some conversions. So first of all, we're going to do deanery to hexadecimal. Uh, let's do 31 in hexadecimal. So what we do, our columns are now going to be 1, and it's always going to be 1, and then 16. And this is because this is 16 to the power 0, and this is just 16 to the power 1. So 31 hexadecimal. How many times does 16 go into 31? It's the same process as before. It goes in once. Remainder, 15. And 15 in hexadecimal. We don't write 15 here because 15 is represented by. Let's write it out. I, I always do this because I can never. Uh, my, my perception of the alphabet is not great. So 15 is F. In fact, you probably could remember that. But yeah, so the answer is 1F in hexadecimal. Right, 210 in hexadecimal. So, same column headings again. Do 1 and 16. In fact, it does not look a 1, but it is. So, how many times does 16 go into 210? Well, uh, I actually just worked this out because 
it's not easy to do in your head. It goes in 13 times. But we're not going to write 13 because 13 is represented by D. So it goes in 13 times. So 210 divided by 16 uh, goes in whole times into 13. And this gives us a remainder of 2 because it equals 208. Uh, it goes up to 208. So um, remainder of 2, 2 times 1 is 2. So we just write 2 here. So the answer is D2 in hexadecimal. Right, now if we go from hexadecimal back to deanery, so 27 in deanery, uh, just so you know you can have hexadecimal numbers without a letter in, uh, just to make that clear because you might get confused, this is where the prefix, uh, sorry the subscript really comes in handy because that might look like an integer, a, a deanery integer to you. So 27 in deanery, we write in 27 in our columns, uh, you're unlikely to get a third column, that would be 256, I don't think for example to say you're going to get more than that. As uh, so 27 in here we write 116, and the same process as before, we just multiply them together, so 16 times 2 plus 7 times 1, and that equals 32 plus 7, which is going to be 39. Okay, so 9C in deanery, exact same process. So we go 1 and 16, and then we write 9C in. Uh, so this is 9 times 16 plus whatever C represents. So C is represented by 12, 12 times 1, and this is going to be uh, 156. Okay, if we now look at converting directly from binary to hexadecimal. So let's do uh, 1101 in hexadecimal and then we'll do this one after. So the first example uh, is, is this one and what you do to convert from binary to hexadecimal is you work out what the four bits stand for. So what is 1101? What is it? First of all, let's just work out what it, what it is in deanery. So uh, that's going to be 8 plus 4 plus 1, so it's going to be 13 in base 10 and that's going to equal whatever 13 is so 10 11 12 13 that equals d so this equals d in hexadecimal and the next example uh, is the same idea as in we still we're still separating it into the individual parts so 0 0 0 1 1 that equals in deanery we'll just we won't write it down but this equals 2 that's uh, this equals three in deanery, um, and three is just the same in hexadecimal, so that's three to base sixteen, and then this is going to be um, one 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 one. That's fifteen, and fifteen is F. So, and so the total number, and this kind of combines to give us three F. So I just added the base fare, not really necessary, but now we need to convert from hexadecimal back to binary. So B in binary, B, uh, remember, is 11. That's what it's representing in deanery. And so we need, we need 11 in binary from deanery. So 11 is actually just 1, 0, 1, 1. That's what 11 is, and I just, that's just something I, you know. You, you know. Um, so that's the answer, 1011. One, one. You have to have that intermediate step where you go to deanery. And so this one, uh, A14, let's go to green to be consistent so my green doesn't show up too well. Uh, so A14, we can write it up here. In fact, it's not A14, it's A14, you've got to be a little bit careful. So A is representing 10 in uh, base 10. And so this is in hexadecimal, this, uh, in binary, this is 1010. Zero, one, zero binary uh, 1 is just going to be 0 0 1 in uh, binary you have to include the leading zeros because we're dealing in multiples of 4 here that's the key to the relationship between hexadecimal and binary we're dealing it we're dealing with it in 4 bits and so you can't just write 1 you have to write the leading zeros too and 4 is going to be sticking to that theme with the leading zero is going to be this so you can essentially combine these um, let's change colour just for the occasion. Uh, we can essentially combine these in order. So 10 first, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0, 0. That is our binary representation of A14 here. 
So that's it for this video, a very, very long one, much longer than I expected, so sorry about that, I didn't realise it was going so long, uh, but I tried to make, I tried to do as many examples as possible, so hopefully it was useful. Uh, don't worry if you get stuck on this, in any of this, in this video, uh, there'll be other videos on YouTube, other resources around. It's really easy to test yourself on this topic, you can, uh, there, if you just Google binary converters, you can just make your own examples and check answers, so it's really easy to practice and I would recommend if you have any doubts look up other videos on YouTube uh, and practice yourself. So uh, next up we're looking at different types of representation, different types of data, so thank you for watching.